This is Josh Curran here to show you the basics in creating your own augmented reality using iJack Creator and Keynote. I will be using this artwork of Optimus Prime just painted on a piece of wood. You can download your own JPEG in the YouTube video notes at the bottom. This is the animation that we will be learning together in Keynote and then we'll put through the iJack Creator augmented reality app and then put on our artwork. All right, let's get busy making our augmented reality. What I've done for my students to help uh, reinforce the understanding here is I created this artwork. It actually exists on a wood panel of Optimus Prime, simple black and white values and polygon shapes, which is the reason why I chose Optimus Prime. Because when we recreate these shapes onto Apple's Keynote, they are easy enough for all age groups to quickly build and then quickly animate. Just note, you can use Google Slide to create your stop motion animation, but it is a bit easier to export this as an animated GIF through the export features in Apple's Keynote. After you've created your artwork, then we need to measure the length and the width because that will be the size of our slide deck inside Keynote. If you don't set your slide deck to match the artwork, then what will end up happening is your augmented reality animation could be a bit too small or overhang on the outside edge. And so how we do that is Keynote uses increments of points. And so I did a simple conversion just from the internet and 11 inches converts to 792 points. And so we'll go ahead and do that right now. We'll go to document on Keynote and then the slide size right here. We'll do a custom setup and you can see it's in points and that's where that comes from. So our width is 792 and then our height is 1116 and so that's going to be the size of our slide deck and it's important that we did that from the get-go i actually don't need this slide anymore so i will delete that and i'll take this and i'll stretch it to the corner just so you can see this a little bit better i'll zoom out and i'll fit that to that edge there you go, the aspect ratio fits pretty darn close. I can go ahead and delete that slide. And what I'm gonna do is copy uh, and paste a few more of my slides here on the left. If you want the artwork to show for a little bit in your animation, then you need to make sure that you have images of the artwork. The next thing we're gonna do is make our own custom shapes using the pen tool. And these ones will be the ones that we will animate. So go ahead and grab the pen tool underneath the shapes and using the pen tool is fairly simple. You just click on the corners there and it drags out a line already. I just click and click and click and it will create our shapes and there we'll close it. I'll go ahead and select red. To deal with this organic edge here, I'm just gonna do a bunch of little polys or excuse me, little edges and just continue to click at the points and click and then fill that in with red and so we'll speed this process up for you. So if you are curious on how to cut these shapes out into the shape that we created, what we'll first do is put this back on there. I just hit Command or Control Z to undo. I'll change the opacity of this so I can see through here. And again, I'm under the format and the style. And with that shape selected, I can change the opacity. I'm gonna come back and grab my Shapes tool. And at this point, I'll click and click and get as close as I can to find this shape, close that off. And I'll fill that in with a contrasting color of green. Again, bring the opacity back so we can, I guess, kind of see that. What we're gonna do is select both of these. In order to select two shapes at the same time, or multiple shapes for that matter, you hold Shift. So I've got the one behind it selected. I'll hold Shift, click the green one. Now they're both selected. What we're going to do is go to the Arrange panel under the Format tab. And here are some things that we can do. We can actually join them together. But in this case, we want to subtract. So I'll go ahead and click that. And it almost just, as a cookie cutter does, cuts through that. So I'll repeat that process on these other shapes here. Now that your shapes are complete, they're ready to be animated. So now moving forward, I'm gonna hit con Command or Control C to copy and then Command or Control V to paste that. And so now we can start doing our animation. My animation, I am just going to change the background to black to go ahead and get rid of the white there, the original image. And so what we will do is grab a basic shape and we will make this black and then we will arrange this shape and send it backwards 
and then bring it forward there. So we have that arranged. So this shape is in front of the image there and it's behind the polygon shapes that we created. All right, so we have our size of our artwork on our slide deck set correctly. I might delete a couple of these. So we have just three slides there. And then we have our images here, or our shapes appear, our polygon shapes appear, and then now we have the image disappear. So I'm gonna have that included in my animation. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. Next, I'll go ahead and copy and paste that next slide, and this is where the animation's gonna start to work. Let's do some little bit of maybe mouth movement here, and then some color changes. And so just to make this flash, I'll go ahead and assign some of these color. So we'll go to format and then style with that selected. I'll hit blue, we'll go green. And that will be the first slide. And then we'll copy this and then paste it. And then you'll just repeat the steps. Okay, after you've changed your colors, then what we'll do is add a little animation to the mouth there. Have it look like it's maybe mouthing something or moving. Copy and paste that slide again, over and over. Move. Copy that slide, paste that slide, maybe move this a little bit, move this up a little bit, and repeat. So the question is how many slides do you need to have? And the answer is however long you want your animation to be. And so for this animation, I only need a few slides and I have about seven or eight counting this red one here. And so to maximize this, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is select all of the ones that we've animated and colored. I'll hit Command C or Control C to copy. And then selecting down here at the bottom, I'll hit Command V or Control V to paste that in. I'll go ahead and do that until I have about 70 or maybe 60 slides here and that's gonna give me about six seconds of GIF animation. Now it's time to export this as an animated GIF, and then we'll uh, put this into iJack Creator. To export this as a GIF, it's very easy. Just go to File and Export, and you'll notice that there's a click for Animated GIF. Here we wanna make sure that you uh, select the slides that are gonna be included into the animated GIF, so we'll go one through 60. I'll keep the resolution large, and we need to make sure we have this at 24 frames per second as requested by iJack Creator. This is uh, uh, something that can be applied to the timing of your GIF. So if you wanted a full second between each frame, that's gonna make this one whole minute and it's probably gonna be too slow of a GIF. So I usually keep it right around one tenth of a second and that'll give us about seven seconds of animation. And now that you've exported your GIF to your computer and you have your trigger image, you're ready to then go to visit ijackapp.com and download the AR software to your computer. Here we are inside iJack Creator. It's literally easy as one, two, three. We'll hit begin here, and then we just need to add our file. So go find the original image, the Optimus Prime JPEG shot here, and that'll be our trigger image, and hit next. And then this is where we're gonna add our GIF. Uh, just side note, if you're using a PNG sequence, the benefits of using that are because you can create a transparent background. So we'll find our animated GIF that we just created. Hit open and it's gonna upload. At this point we can go ahead and add sound if we wanted to and I'll hit create. Go ahead and label this. Let's do our Optimus Prime YouTube example one. At this point, iJack Creator on your desktop has generated a QR code for your personal device, tablet, whatever you've downloaded iJack Creator app to will then be able to upload the information onto the device and then enable the augmented reality viewing. I'm going to take you to what it looks like on my iPhone right now. Okay, here we are in the iJack Creator app on my iPhone. On the bottom left, we'll hit the icon that will then activate the camera. And at this point, we'll hold this up to the QR code. You'll see it's downloading the artwork onto my own personal device. And this will enable us to then take this over to the artwork. You can do a real quick preview of this display on the computer. You can see that it is working, but let's see what happens when we view it on the actual artwork itself. As you can see, voila, it is working.
That concludes our lesson on augmented reality basics. I've done this with age groups as early as grade five. They've been able to quickly navigate through this tutorial and create something on their own. Please watch the next video if you're curious about how to marry the optical art with this augmented reality. My name is Josh Kern from Teacher Josh, and we'll see you next time.